Hey everyone, got another review here, not motherboard based this time, but we do have the Be Quiet Dark Rock 5 CPU cooler. There's also a Dark Rock uh, Pro 5, don't get that confused with this one, which is uh, definitely has a larger heatsink and also two fans in it. I actually did a review on the previous generation of Dark Rock 4 years and years ago, probably one of the early videos of uh, my channel there, if you want to go ahead and check that out. Really old video from like 2018 if I recall. And I'm uh, really happy that they did go ahead and release a new generation here, some months back. And really happy I actually got my hands on this. It's actually going to be meant for one of my main PCs. Probably one I'm going to be doing a lot of video editing. Uh, I actually did previously have a regular stock cooler, the one of the Wraith Prism coolers there. They were really beautiful, not uh, particularly too ideal when I'm going to be doing a little bit of overclocking and other stuff on it. So let's go ahead and plug this particular cooler in there. Take a look at what's around the box. Some other little pictures here, really nice thing to see. Looks like about eight heat pipes uh, total from the actual big heat sink over here to the uh, little uh, wafer cooler right over there. This looks like uh, about a 120 millimeter fan. I think this might just be a little bit smaller than the fan that was actually on the Dark Rock 4. And over here you can immediately see some details here. Just try to focus in there if it's not already focused. Some other details here, all the sockets that this uh, particular cooler, uh, cooler actually supports. All the, cool, all the uh, sockets, uh, very recent sockets, and even previous ones as well too. AM3, AM4, AM5, they're pretty much almost the same, but just in case you're wondering, AM4 and AM5 absolutely supported. Some uh, recent uh, Intel ones are here as well too, 1700, etc, etc, right there. Definitely a nice little size box, a little bit of weight to it, probably feels about a good 3 to 4 pounds here. So let's go ahead and take a look here and open it up. This looks like our CPU fan right here. Go ahead and open that up in just a moment. And there is the product. Whoops, the logo's upside down. Right there is our main heat sink here. The Dark Rock 4 is actually really amazing. There goes one box right there. The Dark Rock 4, as I was saying, was in a really amazing CPU cooler. And I really enjoyed, I actually have two of them installed on two of my systems and still in use all these years. The only little thing I found challenging is just basically getting the fan installed on the uh, heatsink. But uh, definitely much better and much easier to install than the previous gen uh, Dark Rock 3. Uh, cooler which uh, really had to do you to use some uh, allen wrench screws this one actually used a regular phillips screwdriver so let's go ahead and see what the newer generation is by the way be really careful with these fins uh, i have actually not cut myself on these but they are pretty sharp on the dark rock 4 i did actually hear a story of someone actually you know, accidentally sliced a piece of their finger so obviously it does feel really nice looks really nice you can see very very premium looking heatsink If you're unboxing your cooler for the first time here, just be real careful with the styrofoam because right over there is your Phillips screwdriver with a little uh, Be Quiet uh, logo right over here. Really nice to see this because I actually do have the screwdriver from the previous gen, the Dark Rock 4, right over here. You've probably seen me use this particular screwdriver on motherboard installations and other hardware as well. So good to see that they actually did include a little Phillips screwdriver here. I'm sure you probably already have one, particularly this size, very common size, a little bit smaller than just a typical size for a regular screw, particularly, but this definitely uh, will get you going with this particular cooler and also other hardware as well too. Sorry there for the blur. Taking a look here at our fan as well too. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm guessing this is probably a nice little four pin fan. Yep, there it is. It looks like it is really a 120 millimeter fan, which is a very common size. So if you want actually want to substitute this for an RGB fan, go right ahead. Maybe even a Be Quiet one. And basically your fan's going to go right over here. 
for a moment there, when I was actually looking at this heatsink, I didn't think immediately, oh wow, it's definitely a lot thinner than the previous gem, but don't forget, we just had to add the fan here to get the full effect of uh, basically what you're going to be dealing with inside your case, as you can see here. And now just picking up that box that just basically fell out when I was unboxing this originally. Immediately we can see here our tools that we're going to need to get this installed. For a moment there I didn't think instructions were going to be included with this, hence the QR code that was actually on the box. But here we do have a little bit of instructions and uh, basically a list of all the screws and everything that you're going to be needing over here. And absolutely some instructions here as well too, so I'll definitely go ahead and get to that. As I mentioned, I'll be installing this on uh, one of my main PCs using the AM5 socket. So I'll be using the AM5 bag over here. Very similar um, labeling thing they actually had in the previous uh, generation as well too. One bag for AMD. Whoop, there you go. One bag for Intel. So here is our AMD for socket uh, AM4, AM5 right over here as intended with relayed screws. And this bag right over here looks like we have a little bit of thermal paste, but I'll be using thermal grizzly paste on this instead. And here are these uh, these little tools over here that basically hold and spring the fan against the heat sink right over here. They sound like a bit of a challenge to be to install, but they're actually not so bad once you get the hang of it. First time you'll probably just be scratching your head, and again, don't don't cut your fingers on this uh, wonderful looking heat sink over here. But uh, it's actually not too hard. To actually install basically what goes on here connect right over here and here holding the basically a little clip goes here and here and slide right through the heat sink and fin and just hold it here and another one on this side as well too so my experience with the installation of the previous generation of heat sink here uh, i can definitely go ahead and give you a quick tip obviously you're going to be very tempted to go ahead and install this fan immediately right now before you even install it on the motherboard which seems pretty ideal and not so much hassle but um, you can see here there is a screw here that's basically going to uh, go right into the bracket and your socket to get this installed on the motherboard. And obviously having the fan over here is unfortunately going to block your access to that screw. Another little thing you might have noticed is you might be wondering, well, the other where's the other screw? The other screw is right over here. And uh, how on earth are you going to access that? Well, little uh, very, very unique piece over here. This uh, beautiful little cover here on the heat sink actually comes off. Little fins there as well too, and does give you access with your screwdriver to go right in here and access that screw down here. So very easy to access right there, and same thing over here. So obviously you'll want the heatsink installed on your motherboard before even attaching a fan. Otherwise, this particular screw over here will be completely blocked by whatever fan you plan to install on this heatsink. So yes, go ahead and install this first then attach your fan here, which uh, might be a little difficult, but if you do not have a video card in the way and other stuff in the way as well too, should be pretty straightforward. Like I said, don't let the brackets actually uh, you know, get you concerned. That's a little difficult. It can be the first time, but once you get it going, you're gonna realize taking this out and putting it back in shouldn't be a problem at all.
All right, as you can see here, I actually went ahead and followed the instructions and removed both the top and bottom bracket here. Put these little uh, pegs right over here. Put these brackets left and right and go ahead and screw them in. So we do have the support bracket now for the heat sink. Going to go ahead and put that over here. Um, put one screw on the top. As you said, the top uh, cover is removable. The, screw, the screwdriver goes in, screws this in, and then the other screw over here is accessible so we can go ahead and screw that in. Then install the fan, as you can see. So I think I'll go ahead and give everyone a nice little whiff of the audio over here. Very, very quiet, trying to stay away as much as I can from the rear fan, the fans that are built onto the video car, which I believe there's three of them, and the three fans on the front of the case as well too. I have to say I'm very impressed with the audio, very, very low decibels over here. I'm guessing this fan's running at maybe around 40 to 50% RPM. Obviously the CPU not doing any uh, crazy workload, so obviously it's not running close or anywhere near full speed. But considering how premium the fan is and my experience with Be Quiet fans in the past, it's probably not going to be too much loud, especially the CPU fan. This fan on the back here, obviously a very high RPM, 140 millimeter fan, hitting speeds of around 2200 RPM. Even that, um, even at full speed, you still can hear it, but not the crazy audio that you would actually anticipate from a large fan running at such a high speed. 
Hope you enjoyed the installation here. I did actually have this computer in mind for this CPU cooler. Now that I got my hands on it, I went ahead and harvested the CPU and the CPU cooler for another build and really happy to actually go ahead and get this back up and running with a really nice uh, cooler installed. I was really impressed of how easy it was to attach the fan to the heat sink using these clips over here. On the previous generation, the clip would attach from the top and the bottom, same thing on the other side. Once they're actually attached, very, very hard to actually go ahead and remove to some degree. You feel like you're gonna have to really yank the thing. The thing was actually, clip was actually gonna dig into your fingers to some degree. This over here, one little pull over here and this whole thing pretty much comes out. Obviously very easy to remove it. On the other side, once one side is taken out. But I have to say I'm really impressed of uh, the improvement of basically how easy this is to go ahead and install. The attaching the heat sink to the motherboard with those little screws, not the screws on the little bar on the bottom are actually stagnant. Very easy as well too. Taking this clip, uh, this uh, piece right over here, the shield, to actually access the uh, screwdriver um, access panel, access hole right over there. Also another really uh, good plus there as well too. I definitely will be jumping into doing some numbers and comparisons with stock coolers and even the liquid cooler at some point. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Definitely look forward to that video at some point. I'm actually really looking forward to getting some software and operating system and everything reinstalled on this system over here. I'm going to be using this for some video editing. I really do have an, uh, some good things in mind for it, especially with the 96 gigabytes of RAM I've installed there. So what's your experience with uh, Be Quiet CPU coolers? I know there's been a number of generations for years now. The previous generation has been a couple of uh, generations before that. The uh, 2, the 3, the 4, which I did a review on many years ago, one of my very first videos. And now I'm really happy to say I got my hands on the Dark Rock 5 working really well and see how it performs over the next few weeks, especially doing some tests on it. So I'll def definitely look forward to that as well too. Hope you everyone enjoyed this video, this installation, and everything that was included over here. Let me know if you have any quick comments, any questions regarding the build itself, or even especially the cooler as well too. Definitely check out the Dark Rock 4 video if you want to go ahead and take a blast from my past. One of my earlier videos as well too. Thanks again for watching everyone. Stay safe, take care, enjoy your builds. Bye-bye.